Hey folks, in today's episode, William and I play Battle Lore Second Edition Friday Night Fights. Stick around. You're listening to the Beans and Dice Podcast, a podcast about how we game. Hey folks, thanks for sticking around. Uh, welcome to the Beans and Dice Podcast. I'm Carlos. And I'm William. And tonight is Friday Night Fights. And yeah. We're going to be playing Battle Lore Second Edition, which is a, it's a, it's one of, again, back to one of our favorite game designers, Richard Borg. So it's Battle Lore Second Edition tonight. I'm going to be playing the blue team. The blue team are the Dakon Army. William will be playing the Afuk Army. Uh, and here, hand me your, your your army card, so I'll, I'll give a rundown of what each of us have. So today, uh, in, in the game of battle lore, it's a game of combat, and you're gonna win by win having 16 victory points at the end of the game. You're playing the role of two different factions. I'm playing the role of a very knightly faction. They're like the good guys, or they, they think they are. Uh, they're the knights with archers and, and on horseback, and they ride eagles. I mean, it's beautiful. It's such a, such a beautiful thing. Look at the eagles that they're flying on. Oh! And William, on the other hand, is playing the Athuk. They are more of a chaos type faction that use blood rituals to, to use dark pact and dark magic to devour and destroy their enemies. In the game of battle lore, the way you win is by getting victory points. The way you get victory points is by holding objectives. The objectives on the board are marked with a number one banner. So here's one objective. And then on this side of the board is a second objective. Each player at the beginning of the game will secretly select a scenario for themselves. So these are the scenario cards that you pick and it's gonna, we put them together to build a board. So you can see how we've designed our board based on this scenario. So every game is gonna be different. The number on the card is gonna tell you who goes first. It's also gonna tell you what your card, so here's my card, tells me how to build my side of the board, where I can deploy units, and then any special abilities for that adventure or that, that combat and how I get secret victory points. So for me, I'm gonna get victory points during the victory point step, if I have a friendly unit controlling this bridge between these buildings. William will get a victory point for every three forest hexes occupied by friendly units. So his goal is gonna to be to occupy the forest hexes on the board, because you'll get a victory point for every three. So he's gonna get multiple victory points in his victory point step on his turn. At the start of the first player's turn, which William's the first player, whoever has 16 victory points is gonna be declared the winner. If we both have 16 victory points, then we continue the game moving forward. On a turn, a player will first play a command card. That command card is gonna tell them what sector they can order <coughs> units in. You can see we have sectors for right, center, and left. So the card will tell you which sector you can order units in and how many units you can order in that sector. After you've ordered your units, you then move those units. After you've moved all your ordered units, you then combat with all those ordered units. Once you've done your combat, you then draw back a command card and you get to draw some lore cards which provide magic, uh, which allow you to do even more cool stuff. So that's how a turn order goes. Uh, William <clears throat> is the first player for this scenario. His objective is gonna be to try to hold four assists. My objective is gonna be to try to <clears throat> hold, uh, the hold the bridge in the center of that city structure there. Uh, William's army consists of four Viper Legion archers. So he's got one, two, three, and four. <clears throat> Uh, what's great about this game is you secretly place cards face down of where you want units to be. So we really don't know where we're gonna put stuff until we both reveal and whatever's there is there. So he's got his four Viper Legions. He's got two Flesh Ripper Brutes, which are these cavalry units here. They're like big cat units. He's got two Obscenes, which are these large chunky dudes that uh, like to devour things. Uh, a Chaos Lord, so it's just big giant monster Chaos Lord, and then he also got two lore tokens to begin with. Lore is the currency used to play the lore cards, which give you those boosts. Uh, my, so his army is called the Reign of Venom. Uh, my army, known as Blackened Skies, uh, consists of one Citadel Guard unit, which I have here in the center, oh, yeah. five archer units. So <laughs> one, two, three, four, and five archer units, three Riverwatch cavalry units, one, two, three, and one Rock Warrior Flying Eagle. And we will start with William's first turn where he's gonna select for his order phase a combat card, play it, and declare his orders. Stick around. All right, it's William's order step. 
Okay, here's what I'm playing. I'm playing echelon left. Let me put it right over here. I get to move two on my left and one in my center. I'm gonna use these dice to symbolize that. All right, so the one on my center is, I'm my, no, I'm gonna move my archer order, unit. Order the archers. Right there, and then the two over here, I'm going to order this cav and this cav here. All right, so I'm obviously I'm gonna take the Movement forest, step. Forced. All right, that take, ends our movement. I'm gonna take that. That ends our movement. And then these guys will take that forced. All right, that's the end of your movement step. Yep. All right, and now we're on William's attack step. He's only got one unit that can still make an attack. This Which right. unit? <clears throat> right here. Declare your attack. And looks like I can go back to there. So it's they have one, range up two, to four. Four. And you've got <clears throat> line of sight on them. So I'll remove this. All right. So you get to combat two. Two dice. Two dice. See it under here? Yep. Nothing. They don't count because I don't have the right symbols. All right, you were looking for the pierce symbols. <clears throat> I was looking for that. All right, so that ends your attack step. Now you go into the upkeep phase. In the upkeep phase, <clears throat> you're going to do victory points, followed by drawing new command cards, followed by lore. Well, so victory I got points. One. So you currently have one victory point. So go ahead and take a victory point marker there, place it in front of your side of the board. All right, so I got one. Right. And then I'll take a uh, command card. A command card. So refill your command. And now, William, you have the option to either one of these three with your lore cards, either take two lore tokens to get more currency, <clears> or <throat> take one lore token and one lore card. The most lore cards you can have in your hand is four. I'm going to do one and one. Or you can take two lore cards, but you must discard one. I'm going to do one and one. One and one. All right. All right. That That's is the me. end of your step. It is now Carlos's turn. Starting with my order step. All right, it's the start of my my first turn. I'm gonna do my command, and I'm gonna command play the command card of Wedge. Wedge allows me to order one unit in the left, two in the center, one on the right. Uh, but you'll notice I have no units in the right sector, so I'm only gonna order three units. Yeah, it's confusing looking at it that way. I'm gonna just do that. Oh, I guess the cards <laughs> doesn't matter because you can turn it around. I'm going to order one, two in the center, and we will order. Let's go with one on the left. And now it is the uh, movement phase. I will move this cavalry unit who's able to move four spaces. One, two, three, and end their movement there. One, two, to hold the bridge. That is the end of the movement step. I'm now in the attack step. And for Wait, the, move oh, I move over here. Let me finish this move there. Ooh, that's important. Glad I saw that. All right, now it's the attack step. Uh, they do not have line of sight on everything because everyone's behind the woods, so they cannot shoot. This cav unit does not have range, so he's done. And now this cav unit has a target in the forest. Attacking into the forest is a maximum of two dice for me. So two dice coming your way. And I have Vigilant. Uh, we've got one hit and one heroic, which does nothing for that unit. So you lose one and you cannot counter back. That is the end of my step. I will go to my upkeep phase, checking for victory points, one for the bridge, one for the hill, two victory points for Team Cabrera. And now we will put uh, one card into my hand from the command and we will now uh, decide, I will do one lore token and one lore card. And that is the end of my turn, and we will go to William's turn. I already know what I'm gonna play. Play it. Play counterattack. Counterattack, counterattack allows William to use the exact same card I used in the same way that I used it. So I'm gonna order two in the center. So I am going to order, and I get to order one unit here. So I'm gonna order these guys here on this side. I'm going to order these guys here. And then on this side here, uh, I get two that I can order, so order this unit, actually I'm gonna order this unit and I'm gonna order this unit. All right, So you're movement ready. phase. So movement, these guys are staying put, these guys move in, these guys move in. Looking for those victory points. Um, these guys will stay put here and that's, that's it for that. All right, combat. So combat, uh, can I target these? Uh, you can, there's line of sight because that lake on, the, right, so on that will, side allows target, for the, the range. I will target those knights there. All right, uh, their combat dice are Two combat dice? Yeah, for me. All right. I got a flag and swords. 
All right, so one flag, one sword. So the flag causes a retreat. Uh, I don't see any way for me to stop that retreat. I don't have enough, I don't have enough lore. I need some more lore. Okay, so <clears throat> this means that I have to retreat. And how many were you? One were, step. One step. And it's directly away. And because it's in a straight line, it's either this side or this side. So we're gonna go here. Mm -hmm. Since it's an option, it's a must. Okay, all right. These guys will then attack them. Uh, actually, I'm gonna move them into the... I'm gonna move them into the, the building. I have the option. So at least get some cover while we're there. Attacking the building, does that do anything for you? It uh, reduces the damage by one. Damage? It ignores one damage. Uh, so I did one damage and I did a flag. Against this unit here. This unit here yes. from that unit. Yep. So one flag, one retreat, and one damage. damage. So the building allows me to ignore one damage each combat. And I have to retreat though. And the line from here to here is through this hex, through this side. So I have to go back directly back, right to where I want them. But you're not there anymore. Uh, one, two, three, four, can attack. A block line of sight. And these guys, big guy. these can't attack at all. Units block line of sight. And then I will draw, I would, I get, I get one, two, three, four. So I get a point and then another point. So that gives me two. So now you're at two victory points around because you have three forest. All right. And then I will draw my combat card. Then I'm going to actually choose to draw two lore. This means you have to discard one yes. from your hand. I know, I know which one I'm going to discard. <laughs> you didn't like that one? <laughs> I can't use it. I don't have that unit. <laughs> oh, that's a good point. So it's useless. That's why I did that. So you maxed out with your hands? Uh, yeah, I'm a maxed out right now. Yep. All right. That's the end of Will's second turn. Yep. All right. It's the start of my second turn, and I'm going to do my command phase. I'm going to command uh, line advance, which gives me one in each sector, but you'll notice that I have none in the right sector still. So we'll order the knight unit. Oh, will we? No, because then I, I will leave that. No, I can't vacate that space. Let's, reinfor let's reinforce. We're going to order the citadel guard. That way they can start moving that way. And then... Then we'll order the archers over here. Matter of fact, we'll order the archers. That's the end of my order step. Movement step, archers will move one, two into the building. These archers will not move. Now I go into the combat step and starting over here, they move so they don't get the double shot, but they get to shoot once. They're gonna fire one set of dice across the lake at the other archers. Is your combat back or no? Uh, no, that's only for adjacent. Okay. Yeah, you can only battle back on adjacent. Gotcha. So I get two dice to fire. That's my normal attack dice for my yeoman archers. Um, and you're in the forest. That's the max dice is two, so it's equal. And dang, I missed. All yeah. misses. I think archers are going to be very... Not useful. Not, well, I think they're going to be... I think they're just going to... Yeah, and they got. Well, let's find out. I'm gonna fire at your uh, your fatties. obscenes. My fatties. Yeah. My big boys. Hopefully, chunky, I chunky can monkeys. push them here. Chunky monkeys, chunky monkeys, chunky monkeys. And I get one flag and one heroic. Heroic does nothing, so the flag is gonna push you back. But I'm supported because I have to. I can choose either way, right? Uh, you have to pick. If both are supported, then you're supported. If one is not, you have to move into that one. Okay. Then that's. I guess. That's and I guess that was it for combat. Kind of. Blah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna draw a, a, com a command card, and then I will draw on this point. I'm gonna go ahead and get two lore tokens because I I am not rolling any lore, so I'm not getting any magic. No, so I'm gonna ask for magic, and I'm gonna end my turn and pass it to William. All right, it's the start of the third turn. I'm gonna do William's first player attack left, which is activate three units. So it'll be these three units here. All right. And then um, I'm gonna do it this way. I'm gonna go, these guys move a total of three. So I'm actually gonna move them off here. So I'm gonna go one, two, and three over here. No. Move these guys here. Yeah, it's probably better to use something cheap like that instead of cavalry to hold the objective. And then um, these units are not gonna be able to do anything. He can see one, two, three, four. I can still fire on him. We can fire to check for line of sight, center to center. The building's in the way. Counts. Buildings block line of sight. Okay, so then there is nothing that can be done there. Right, I'll give this up, and uh, I will still get two victory points. So it ends your movement, and that's a five. So I'm just gonna cast. Oh, this. I didn't get my victory points at the end of my turn. Five. I gotta remember to do that every step. So I have a five now. Um, then I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to I'm gonna take two lore. So I'm at total five lore. Draw my command card. That's it for William. That's it for me. All right, folks, it is the my turn again. Uh, I'm going to play. My command card will be Battle March. Order three units that are not weak. A uh, weak unit is a unit that is down to one figure. So what we will do is we will order one, 
two, and I can pick any three units to order. Oh man, three. <clears throat> That'll be my three. And now we go into movement step. We will move forward to take the building and my movement going into the building. We will move forward to take the bridge and they will not move so that they can double shoot. All right, we're in the attack phase. Uh, we're gonna start with combat from the archers into the other archers. Two dice going your way into the dice tray. And one hit, one lore. All wow, right, really? I get some lore, finally. Imagine that, I can't believe, I'm not getting any hits on anything. All right, and because they have double shot, they get to shoot again. Second shot. One hit, one heroic. So that kills the unit. First blood. All right, now we're gonna go into combat using the cavalry unit into the kitty cats there. My river watch riders. All right, so combat from these knights, or these uh, river watch riders into the uh, flesh rippers. The river watch riders have vigilance, so William cannot counter my attack, uh, attack back. Three dice coming at you. Oh, excuse me, no, it's two dice. Let me do that again, folks. All right, so the river watch riders attacking into the flesh rippers. They get two dice and they can't, William cannot counter back. And we rolled one heroic symbol and one flag. The heroic symbol means nothing. The flag makes them retreat. And I will choose not to advance. <laughs> And you can't make me go this way because the attack came from that way, right? Right, they have to move directly away. So I, I do I want to advance? I don't want to advance. <clears throat> I don't want to advance. All right, uh, that is it. These, uh, this unit cannot attack because they are, they're practically done. Uh, and that is the situation on the board. Uh, I'm going to check for victory points. I get one for the bridge, one for holding the hill over there on the left side. That's gonna give me two victory points. It's gonna put me at six victory points to William's five. And that's the end of my round. I'm gonna draw my command card and I will choose to draw one and one for the lore. So I'm at five lore and I will draw my fourth lore card and I will pass to William. Okay, start of William's turn. I'm gonna play echelon right and I'm gonna order them and the two over here. <clears throat> All right. All right, it is back to William's turn. It's the start of the turn. We are currently at five victory points for William and six for me, so the victory, the end condition is not triggered. William, do your orders. So, echelon right, one center, Chaos Lord, two on my right, which would be the only two I have here. Well, technically, I can do that one. The big boys. All right, on top of that, I'm gonna play Predator, which allows me to roll four combat dice. And what does it do? Um, read it, read it, read it. The choose, choose an order unit, gonna be him, obviously. Roll four combo dice for each double sword or single sword move. He, he gets to move with one additional uh, hex. Nice. Normally you can move one. So that's doing the order step? No, uh, during the move step. step. Yes. So in the move step, so you're gonna give him predator. So I'm gonna pick this uh, up. Geez, so this guy's gonna come flying in like a bat out of hell. Or a demon out of hell. I rolled none. Oh wow. I, whiffed it. I, I whiffed it. So I still gotta move him. So he'll still get moved. And he'll get moved this way. Wow, that was useless. Let's get discarded. Let's get discarded. The dice, they are fickle. All right. Now These... they, they, the obscenes have craving, so they can move too as long as they end adjacent. As soon as you step into it, it ends your movement. That's just natural. It's gonna be one, two. Right. And then these guys can be one, two. They're still ranged well, combat. It's still ranged, but I get counters, because anytime you get hit by an adjacent unit, so you don't want to be right there. That's the tough but you part. You said I can't shoot. You can't shoot from there, because the forest blocks. So that's a, t so that's one, a tough two. All right, is that where you're going? Might as well. All right, those are your moves. I need I need to get as much attacks as I can. Right. Um, Into can, the combat step. He can't attack, so we'll remove that die. Put these over here. I'm gonna have my archers attack you guys on the hill because they don't get... Uh, hills allow me to ignore units when it comes to line of sight. That's all it does. Okay. So it lets me kind of see over the landscape. So we'll go, we'll go archer and archer on this. A flag and a sword. Flag and a sword, so the archers have to retreat. Mm-hmm. Yep, they must retreat. It's a straight line, so I go either way. I'll go this way, <clears throat> that way. All right, and then we're gonna do the big boys, which they get four combat dice onto your knights. Yeah, those have scenes that have crazy and they have ferocity, so they get they get four attack dice. Ferocity is during your opponent's attack step, if this unit would be forced to retreat. Okay, against, during my get, attack against you, so if you make you it get retreat, the I get to hit first. Yeah. Ooh, one sword and 
two flags. All right, so leave them in there. Let's take a peek. We've got one sword, two flags. So we're gonna do a damage. You will do a damage. So I lose a guy and let the bodies pile up over here. And then two flags. Oh, wait. Uh, I forgot that when you did this, I was gonna play this. Okay. Pillage. Play after an enemy unit retreats. Your opponent loses two lore and I gain it. So you stole two lore from me? Yeah. You pillaged it? And then... So now I took a damage and then two flags, but because my units are supported, so I've got guys behind them, they ignore the flags. And now they can counterattack. So my units will counterattack, but I only get two dice. So they're not... These aren't the big <clears throat> cavalry guys. I thought they were. The big guys are in the box. Yeah. The, these guys, the big guys didn't come out. These are the little riders. They're like a light cav. Uh, let's see, vigilant. I got, I got vigilant and flanking. All right, so nothing extra. Here we go. Two dice coming your way. One hit to the obscene. All right, that is the end of your combat step. All right, upkeep. I would draw one first. Victory points. Oh, victory points. I get two again. I got one, two, three, plus that. So I get two more victory points. I'm at seven now. Uh, I'm going to draw a card. And this time, I'm gonna go one, so I can go, I'm gonna take one and one. All right, back to my turn. Uh, so in my order step, I get to play a card, counter attack. Uh, play this card to copy your command card, the command card your opponent played last turn. <clears throat> Follow the instructions on that card as though you played it, reversing any sections it references. So what it does is allow me to play, just like William did, Two on the left, on my left, and one on my center. Uh, I will order the center unit. Played based on the way the card is facing me, or facing would have been facing you. It's it's the same sectors that you did, so oh, reversing it here. Okay, yeah. Gotcha. <clears throat> uh, I will order two on the left. My left will be the knights. Uh, I only get one in the center, right? That's all I get. Yeah. Let's start just bringing in reinforcements. All right, that's it for my orders. Movement step. We will move the Citadel Guard. They have a speed of two. They will go one, two towards the battle. The Cav unit will not move. Maybe they will, because they only attack with two dice. So they might as well just go right into the forest, because the forest, they'll stop their movement, but the forest minute maximum dice out of the forest is two. Not me. Well, you're special. <laughs> <laughs> and then the archers here on the left, William, they're gonna take that hill again, because I gotta get my points. Yeah, I figured. All right, so now we go into combat step. We'll st uh, th there's no combating here. Uh, this cav unit, uh, we'll start with the cav unit on the obscenes. Okay. Let's go with that. No, we won't. We'll go with the archers on the obscenes. The archers get two dice. They do not, they do not double shot this time because they moved. So I don't, I don't get double dice this time, William. You should be glad to know. And we've a got and a, flag. a flag and a lure. All right. So oh, back to my camera, flag and a lure. So one retreat for you from the archers. Yep. And they're done. Now the cab unit will attack. And actually, before I finish that, the fact that I was adjacent to you gave my cab, my archers an extra die. Because when they that? roll combat dice, flanking, they get an extra die, and it, it's nothing. Not a, nothing. <laughs> All right, so the cab unit's gonna attack now. My worry was if I hit with them and retreated to there, when they shoot. shot, you countered and eat my lunch. <laughs> How can I counter? I can't get in there. You could have. Oh, no, with the, yeah. All right, the horses attack. We got one hit and one flag. Okay, now they're weakened. So they're weakened and they push straight back and I will not advance. I don't want to get next to those guys. They're ugly as I'll get out. And that is the end of my turn. I will draw a command card. To, uh, victory points are going to be two again. So two, v, two VP, one for that hill, one for the bridge. And Dan, uh, one command card. And I will go with, since I have four of these, I will go with two lore, which takes me to seven, I'm sorry, six. I'll have six lore at the end of this round. All right, and now it's the start of William's turn. He's first player, uh, victory, victory condition check. William has seven <clears throat> victory points. I have eight. The first person to 16 wins. We're not there yet. No, I think I, it's gonna be tough. It's tough for me. To get it is, well, you're, you're your victory condition of being spread out is, is not easy because you gotta spread out and get well, forest. Well, every time I remove you off of something, you're coming right back. And it also entices you to stay in the forest and the forests are all spread out. So it's like you're, you're holding units back to hold victory points and they're not stopping me from getting command, uh, uh, victory points myself. Uh, play, William's order phase. I'm playing dark in the skies. Oh, order nice. three archer units. So the only three I have available. <clears throat> uh, during your attack step, each order unit that did not move during your move step may perform one additional attack. Well, they're not moving, so they're all gonna attack. So I'm gonna break it down and um, 
These archers will attack them first. Right. So that's. Do you get you get extra dice for darkening this guys, right? Um, now you just get an additional attack. Okay. So I do it. Flag and a sword. Which and way can you go? So with the art, the attack coming that to this center, they're supported. You need two in the back. No, not two. As long as you're on the direct opposite side of where the attack came okay. through. Uh, you got it. Again, second attack. Ooh. Now we got some damage. But you are in a building. That's that's what I'm saying. Oh. If I can go here, I, I thought these would retreat because you're only supported on this side. So the way a retreat works is you look for, for shooting. You look at the side that the line of sight went through. Mm -hmm. The direct opposite side is the side they would retreat into. If that side has a friendly unit in it, you are supported. So for the purposes of this attack, that line goes through this hex, which means this is the opposite. The opposite side is friendlies, I'm supported. You would have to shoot me through this hex to push me into the and water. And their building says you block one damage. One damage. So I just get a lure. You get a lure okay. on that one. A flag and a hit onto here. Same guy? Same. No, I'm sorry. Oh, from, from, from that there, side? From here. To here. So they're going that, because it's a Right, so now they ignore the damage, but they're they no, must. They're, no, they're not on the damage. They're on oh, a bridge. They're, you're right, they're on a bridge. They are on a bridge, so we're gonna take one damage and they will retreat back into the next hex. So my only attack now would be one, two, three, either there or there. Is that possible? Center to center crosses the forest. Center to center crosses the forest. All right, so then let's see. One, two, three, four. Yep, so you can shoot that way. I'll shoot, I might as well shoot that way. Let them fly. Flag and they're poisoned. Nice. So the what's great is the, the poison token is going to allow any combat results of a lore result turn into damage instead of lore. And they will retreat, so they came from this direction through this side, mm -hmm. pushing them back to here. All right. And now so, they're poisoned. Right. So, so now, now I'm, <laughs> so I'm like, now the flags are going to be supported, right? But, all, but now but lures become damaged. So, I mean, it's a trade off. First attack, I get a lure and a flag. Or a heroic and a flag. I'm sorry, heroic and a flag, so. So no no damage and I'm supported. Oh, it's lore that yeah. I have to get, right? You're looking for lore. And a second attack. Oh, no. Uh, no, okay. So I'm thinking, so can they get double poisoned? No, once you're poisoned, it's a status. You're either poisoned or you're not poisoned. Three, four, five, six. All right, I got three of these. So first, uh, I need to check victory points. I'm gonna get two again. I still hold two forests. Secondly, I get one card. Third, I get um, it's away. And third, I'm gonna choose to get two lore or one and one. I'm gonna go one and one. So now I'm at four lore, four. Yeah, I'm at four of that. Right. It's the start of uh, my turn. It's well, my command know, step. I don't know what turn number it is. <laughs> yeah, me too, I lost track of that. We're gonna order uh, using Onslaught. Onslaught allows me to order three infantry units, so they have to have the infantry ta tag on them. We'll order the Citadel Knights as one infantry unit. So we'll, is it archers or infantry, I think? Yes, too, right? well, right. at least mine are. Uh, one infantry unit there, and then I will order a second infantry unit there. Okay, well, you're not doing that, because I'm spending eight lore. Tell me more, elaborate. Okay, I am playing Chaos of Battle. Play after your opponent's command step, which is that. Uh, take your opponent's played command card into your hand. Thank you very much. Nice. All right. Um, then give your opponent a command card from your hand. That opponent must play that instead. Oh, oh, that's the, the trickery is strong. So you're only gonna, since you have to play it the way you would play it from that side, you're only gonna order one unit. Well, I can play it to order any one unit anywhere. Because you can always discard a command card. I'm gonna order one unit no matter yeah, what. No matter what, I'll end up ordering <laughs> one unit. <laughs> Because it's uh, two on this side and one in the center. <laughs> yeah, you're not moving that many units this turn. No. Sorry. No. Nope. That's so. a, that I like. I've never. I don't remember seeing that card. That's trickery. I like that. I was like, wait a minute. I got enough lore. <laughs> it cost me I eight lore. I will activate then my one sole unit, which will be the Citadel Guard. Onto the bridge. The Citadel Guard will move <laughs> onto the bridge. Onto the bridge. <laughs> That's what I thought. They have no combat. That will end their turn. I will draw a command card. <laughs> To replace the one I had, and I will take one lore and one lore card to and end my turn. And you must discard one. Uh, I, yeah, because I'm not four, so I got to discard down. So discard it down, and that is the end of my turn. 
I think you get two for holding the bridge. Before I end my vic my turn, I do get my victory points. Uh, I would get one for the bridge and one for the hill. Puts me at 10 victory points. It is now the end of my turn, the start of William's turn. So William, uh, it's the start of your turn. We check for victory conditions. I have 10 victory points. You have nine. We have not met it, so you take a turn. All right. So for me... All right, William's order step. All right, so I'm playing attack left, which orders three units onto my left. And the way I'm gonna order these units here is I'm gonna go one, two, three. I'm gonna go one, two, three. Oh, it's gonna get deadly. I like how you did set up that pincer move because you're pushing me into the water now. Yes. <laughs> and and then obviously they're not gonna move, they're gonna stay there and then they're more than likely going to attack is what's yep. gonna happen. So, seeing as how if I attack you this way and you have to go that way, you will take damage. Right, so now so, I no longer have a safe place to retreat. So, You've taken away all my safe spaces. So, and if I attack you this way, it's the same thing. Yes, you've taken all, right. all my safe spaces away. So. <laughs> <laughs> I have no safe space. So here's what we're gonna I do. I need a safe space. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go and I'm gonna leave one die here. And, uh, to represent, those were the ordered units, right? We're just representing these are the units that were ordered. So, and they have a combat value of three, so I have three here, so I will Which remove, one's going first? We'll, remove, we'll start off with these guys first. All right, those kitty cats go. Hang on, let me see if I have anything that will save me. It's I'm good, step. go ahead, go. Uh, double swords, double swords, and a... Um, Pearson tack. So bad, bad, and more bad? Yeah, well, you're in a building, so you, you only take <laughs> so one. So I'm, go I'm going to ignore one. Mm -hmm. uh, I would ignore one, and I would take one. Um, I think I'm going to accept the results, which mean I lose one unit. Just one? No, I will not accept your results. No, I will not accept. I will not comply, William. Here we go. Here it goes. I will spend two lore tokens, and I will play Wall of Steel. Wall of Steel. Play after a combat roll is performed against a friendly unit. Split the dice into two groups with any number of dice in each group. Yeah, you know how I'm splitting them. Okay. So I'll split one on one side, one on the other. So you have to decide which group you want to use. Oh, well, it doesn't matter because you only block one. That's so. right. Okay. That's right. That's you. All right. That's so I'll survive that one. I'm gonna use my arm. I, I, I got to counterattack. Oh, you still get to counterattack? I get to counterattack. Yeah, you hit bogus. me. So now I get to counterattack. Uh, two dice coming your way at the kitty cats that tried to kill me. But I have my wall of steel up. And I do one damage to the kitty cats. We're gonna do archers here next. See if I can get some poison. Going with the archers? I get some poison on you. Yeah, because if I retreat or completely die, they'll have no target. That makes sense. Yeah, get the poison too. I got a war and a flag. Uh, a flag is supported. They can't come back back, and then the cat, the last of the cats will attack. Ooh. Flag hit flag and a hit. hit. Flag and two hits. Yes. And I can only play one lore card per turn, so I'm done with all so the you're trickery. You're gonna take, so you're I'm not gonna, gonna take, take, you're not gonna take one because of the building. But I will take one from the hit, and, then, and retreating makes me retreat into the water, which turns it into a damage. Uh, the other damage got blocked by the building. So two damage, one guy left. I do get to counterattack. But now you're weakened. I am weakened. I'm officially weakened. Uh, but I get two, two dice coming your way. Single swords mean nothing. Yeah, what you rolled a single sword over there. Ugh. Um, and I think that's it. <laughs> that's all I got. So what I'm gonna do this turn is take two lore. Take your victory points. I'll take my two. So I'll take my one, and then I'll take a 10 after that. Is that what that is? Ugh. Uh, draw this, and I took my two lore instead of drawing a lore card. All right, that is the end of your turn. Mm -hmm. It is the start of my turn, and for my turn, I will activate three in the center. Three units in the center will activate. We will order one, two, and three, and uh, movement step. We will move one there, one, that's as far as you can go, yeah, because I can't go through the water. The yeah, horses don't swim. Two, and final one, three. So I still hold the bridge. Mm -hmm. uh, combat steps. I will start with the cav unit on the kitty cats. <laughs> He's weakened. So on your on your cav unit, your your what are they called? Flesh rippers. Flesh ripper brutes. They look like kitty cats. Two dice coming your way. And we got a lure and a flag, so they will retreat. This way. One that way, and I get a lure. All right, it's not what I wanted. 
Um, combat next will be from here to here. And because he's adjacent to the riders, they get a flanking bonus. So the Citadel guards will roll four dice into the cats. Uh, you're in the forest, it's a maximum of two, and then modifiers. So it's two plus one for the flank. Three dice into the forest. Could have been four. It could have been four. Wish it would have been four. All right, come on, dice, make it happen. And that is not what I'm looking for. I don't know what you got. Um, you got a lore. Yeah, lower a flag, but I'm and supported. you are supported, and a heroic. That is a big bag of nothing, uh, <laughs> plus a lore. And you get the combat back. Uh, yes, and I get to roll three, because that's what they got. Because I'm in the you forest. get to ignore the forest for your special setup. Oh. One hit, which is ignored by the building. Oh, one flag. flag. If the target unit had suffered one or more damage. Which I won't suffer it because the building saves me. But you're going to retreat. Uh, I have to retreat into here. So, so in the retreat step, they take a damage. Okay, so then this doesn't trigger until because after. That's, be that's before the retreat step. Got that's it for combat. Uh, I think that is it. That is it for combat. He can't attack anyone. End of that turn, victory point step. One for the bridge, one for the hill. That puts me at a whopping 12 victory points. And I draw a command card, and I will draw one lore. I'll take one lore token and one command card, or one lore card. And that will complete my turn and place it back in the hands of William for his turn. It's the start of William's turn. Uh, check in for victory condition for winning. I'm at 12 victory points. He's at 10. We're not at 16, so the turn continues. Your go. Yeah, I'm gonna play cavalry charge. <laughs> <laughs> and you gotta know what I'm gonna do. I mean, these are two that are gonna be ordered. They're only my two calves. Is that All the right. end of your move step? It's the end of my move step. All right, I will play a card mm -hmm. in response to your move step. I'm gonna spend four lore and play Battle Cry. Play after any player's move step. Choose a friendly unit. I will choose this cav unit. All enemy units adjacent to the chosen unit must move one hex directly away from your friendly unit if able. So they will battle, he's gonna all by himself battle cry, just yell and scare your flesh rippers one space away. Which one? Both, all enemy units adjacent to him move one space away. I did a battle cry! So after movement, so after after, I might get anything then after this one. Right. Oh wow. Says the guy who stole my command card. <laughs> Wait, is it one unit against everything? All or units. One unit runs away. All units adjacent to the one unit move away one space. I scared him. I and yelled. Now I don't get two victory points. Yeah, that's a rough turn. This is after order three combat. So now, now it's the attack so step. I've... End of the attack. Actually, that goes here. End of the attack step. Victory point step. You get one. You get one now. So there goes the game, folks. I can't catch up now. That was my only catch up. That one. You got to take the bridge, man. It's I like, was going it's like to save Private was, Ryan. I was going to take the bridge. It's right like there. saving it's Private Ryan. You got to come take this bridge. I didn't think there was something like that. It's me and Tom Tom Hanks shooting at the tank with my pistol with my 1911. Ping ping. So I'm gonna draw this. And then I am going to do one and one, so I can get some of these lore cards, see what I can get, because I don't know. Ooh, okay, that's interesting. All right, that's the end of William's turn. All right, folks, it is the start of my turn. Uh, command step, I will play attack right three, but I'm gonna discard it to act to order one unit anywhere. I'm gonna use it to order the rock warrior, which is my big giant bird. Uh, my big giant bird is gonna move four spaces. I'm sorry, three. One, two, actually you go one. He dropped that one, two, and we will go three. So that'll put him behind the building. Uh, at the end of the attack step, he's allowed to move two spaces. So he's not attacking anyone, but he will move two spaces. Let's go one, two, and that will end my turn. I will draw back up one. I will gain two victory points for holding the uh, bridge and the hill on my left. Puts me at 14. Yeah. Uh, I will get one lore token, putting me at five lore and one lore card. And then I will pass to William. There's nothing I can't, this it's for, game. For uh, William's turn. Well, we're not over yet, it's 11. To you, 14. You two more, you win. Stop I can't, me I, from getting I, two. I, I can't stop you. Take the hill. I, no, because you just take it back. I, take no, the there, hill. There's nothing I can do. Kill the units. 
All right, it's the start of Williams' turn. Uh, checking for victory conditions. I'm at 14. He's at 11. Whoa. Uh, so the game is not over yet. Where did my lore go? Uh, I didn't spin any lore. Oh, William it's is. <laughs> it's William's order step. Like, where did my lore go? Now you just moved it around. Um, All right, and you're playing what card? That's uh, attack center. So three in the center. Them, him, and we got to go with the archers. All right. So I'm hoping this works. See him being there, I don't know if that's gonna be, well, I still have to do it that way. It's the only way I can do it. Yeah, yeah, because the other one is an order three infantry units and there's no way. We've got a good hold in that center position. Well, hey, I'm, gonna, yeah. I'm, gonna have, I'm gonna have to do it this way. So it's gotta be here and then here and then we'll the do it like that. And so the shooters will. One, two, three, four. Yeah, yeah, there you go. So we're gonna, we're gonna attack with the archers first, so I can get some poison on you. Yep, drop that poison. That'll help. I got two. <laughs> get two lore instead. More lore tokens. Uh, which? Uh, no, that doesn't do that. Uh, da, da, da. All right, so I'm gonna go with my onslaught here. My big dude here. He any gets... play any cards? That's the thing, I, there's not much I can do, and none of these cards are gonna be, I'm gonna try. Nope. Double sword, flag, lore. Yeah, it's game. That's the thing I can do. All right, so we got, ignore, uh, that. ignore the one damage. The flag does a damage into the, fo into the water, and you gain a lore. Uh, I combat back. Hold on, let me see this one. Uh, hold on. I think, nope, I don't have the card that can do it, so never mind. There was, there, I thought I had something that can do it. All right, uh, combating back on the counter attack. For, uh, he's weak, so it does no damage. One flag, you ignore that, I gain a lore. And then this cats, it's the game. If, I, if I, it doesn't work here, then. With the pursue. All right, so no damage. You run away, do I break the pursuit? Uh, but I do run away, because I'm not supported. And now you get pursue two. So you get to move into my space. And attack here. And attack there. But it doesn't matter because I do get a lure, but. No cards? You got all those cards back there. Yeah, none, none, of them, none of them work. They're not gonna help with damage. That's oh. why it's twice in the game. Let's see what we got Ooh. up there. All right. Ooh, I think they're dead. Well, because they're not in a, in a building, so the first damage does the damage. Mm -hmm. And then because they did a damage, the heroic dice turn into hits. Yes. And you've got two of those bad boys in that tray. So now that second one becomes a damage. And you cannot move any more forward because you can't advance after the pursue. Okay, so let me see if I can do this then. I'll play two, I don't know if this can help, but I get a victory point for eliminating something on your side of the board. Nice. So that's all I, that, give me that. Uh, that play after you, enemy units, so that, that unit, enemy units leader eliminated. That was, um, I think that's all I can do there. So well, I got one, two, three, so I'll get two points still. No other way to get more points? Nope, there's no, I, there's no way for me to get more points. I draw one here. Now, question is, I'm gonna go one and one. Maybe I can get a lore card that can stop you from doing something. Right. It's the only thing I can think that of. That stop me from doing something, right? Uh, hold on, let me, four. Nope, that's, I'll, I'll do it, but I don't think it's gonna work. It's not gonna work, because like the way this card reads, well, it's the end of your turn, so it's the start of my turn. All right, folks, it is my turn. And uh, I think this will be the end of it, Will. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna play uh, attack right. It allows three in the right, but I've got nothing there, so I'm gonna discard it for one unit to activate. All right, before you do anything, I'm gonna do this just for posterity reasons. Oh, oh. I'm playing. In the order step? In the command step. In the command step, okay. So I'm playing summon him a swarm. Oh, the sandstorm. So I'm gonna put one on the bridge. <laughs> Because I, 
Because it's what does the sandstorm do? Place up three tokens on the game board, each in an unoccupied has within uh, two hexes of a friendly unit. Okay. So I'm gonna place one here. We got one sandstorm <laughs> on the bridge. We'll place one there. Uh, I think it still affects the bird too, right? Well, tell me what it does. All right. So read it to me. All right. So treat each hex containing a swarm token as blocking terrain. Okay. When a unit moves into the hex containing a swarm token, you must end its movement. Okay, so it ends its movement. And you roll two dice for each sword or double sword, result that unit suffers one damage. Then remove the swarm token from the from the board. Okay, so it, it acts as uh, like uh, a visual blocking terrain. It's a bunch of sand flying around. And it'll damage whatever steps into it. Correct. So, uh, but it also ends the movement. Correct. So, in the command step. But All right, so it, it's the it's the command step. So you get to he, play that in he, the command step. Can he com he, he can get clean victory points. He can. No, well then it's game. I know what you're gonna do. He can. He, he <laughs> can game. command. Because he's got how many? How, how much HP? He's got six. Uh, four, four HP. Yeah. So, so he can take two damage. Yeah. But you can make it interesting. No. Make it, it hurt. It, yeah, let it rain. Okay, that's really Put him around the... <laughs> it's not going to matter. Let oh. it rain into the water. It's not going to matter. No, I think, I think I'm going to get the victory on this. Uh, but let's make it fun and interesting because it's all about the narrative of the story, right? So I will order one unit. It will be the bird. Yeah, of course. And uh, What would is... you have ordered? Not the bird, huh? No, it was a bird all oh, the time. Okay. Because it was a card that I've been wanting to use, which I will use now. Uh, play during your move step after the friendly rock warrior moves. So I'm gonna move the rock warrior. He's gonna go one, two, and then three onto the sandstorm. So what does the sandstorm do? It, it uh, stops my movement. Uh, stops it. And then it rolls two dice. So you get to roll two dice against me. One hit. One hit, so I take a wound. And then it goes away. So he's bleeding. And then oh, now, oh I will spend four. I hope I didn't catch that. <laughs> I will spend four lore to play Take to the Skies. Play during your move step after a friendly Rock Warrior unit moves. Choose a unit in a hex that the Rock Warrior unit moved through. Remove the chosen unit from the game board. Wow. And place it in any unoccupied hex that it can occupy up to two hexes from the walk warrior. So I'm gonna throw him over there. Just for the fun. And that is the end of his move. Yeah. He's done. Points. Uh, victory point step, I get one for the bridge, one for the hill, and then we come to what we call the end of my turn, start of the next turn. And now that it's the start of your turn, because you're the first player, we check for victory point conditions. I have 16. You don't, that nope. triggers the end of the game. Yeah, that was it. So that's the official end I of the couldn't, game. I couldn't get the last two. I was like, man, there's no, nothing I can do. You felt like you were always two behind. No, I was only one behind. And then, and then came here, two. I could have made- Oh, the I, battle cry. I could have made it even. That battle cry card came in clutch. This was e this, this would have this evened it up. So they would have been keeping, you get 16, I got 16. You get 16, I got 16. And then someone would have to just- the battle cry card just, it took you out. I thought it was only one unit. I was like, two units? All of them. Really? Two units. Like, imagine just him yelling and everything adjacent to him runs away. He's only one dude. But he battle cried really He did that rebel, that rebel yell. That, that little rebel yell he's he did. He's a little knight. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a Yeah, yeah, we'll leave that one alone. Um, so yeah, that that, that ends it. Re-rack it. Re-rack it, right? I mean, that's how it's supposed <laughs> to be played. <laughs> Re-rack it. Yeah, the, the game is, is meant I, to be played in, in series. I did the poison thing, it only triggered one time. You know, you know what it and is? I fired two, two, four, six, eight. I fired almost 12 times. All right, folks, that will do it for the game. It's a victory for Carlos, 16 to Williams, 14. So it's only a two point victory. Oh. Uh, Friday Night Fights, oh. thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. I'm Carlos. And I'm the loser. Yeah. <laughs> Friday Night Fights. Subscribe for more. We'll catch you on the next one. Good night, everybody. Thanks for watching the Beans and Dice podcast. Don't forget to like and subscribe.